Hello everyone. I want to do a quick video here on Reason Studios Reason Software. This DAW has a very, very special place in my heart, and I know it does for a lot of other people too. So I really want to take this opportunity and first off, take a walk down memory lane, go over all of the updates we've experienced over the years, and most importantly, kind of ask ourselves the question, how the fuck did we get to this point? How did it get here? It's a disaster right now. Why was this update so bad with 12, uh, et cetera, et cetera? So first and foremost, having that said, I think we can all agree that the Reason 12 update and even Reason 11 was nothing that we really wanted as far as a full version update. Uh, I, one thing I've noticed that's been pretty consistent over these last two upgrades is a lot of these things that have been changed are not really things that are that you want to change in like a whole version update like the being able to resize the track window here is that's not that doesn't really justify doing a full version update or you know being able to see the sequencer notes when you're inside a track that doesn't to me that doesn't really justify doing a, a full update nor does the high re, high resolution which in itself is also clearly a disaster as you can see from here um, but anyways nonetheless I don't think any of these issues are necessarily Reason Studios fault I think a lot can be blamed on them for trying to rush things out uh, but that's understandable I think this is more an indication of what's going on in the industry than it is really symbolic of oh reason studios just got new 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 ceo or reason studios just they they're slacking on their products or whatever i don't think that's the case i think everyone there is working hard and i think this is symbolic of an industry that's just constantly constantly changing and i think it's symbolic of an industry with a hundred thousand different developers trying to do a hundred thousand different things my me being one of them um, and a hundred thousand different producers trying to do a hundred thousand different things also me being one of them so there's just so much going on technologies improving so much faster and I think what's going on here is that you know recent studios is just having trouble keeping up which is important it's important for a lot of different reasons uh, the main reason being well today the reason 12 update was bad what happens tomorrow when the Ableton 12 update is bad or the new logic is bad or the new Cubase is bad or the new Reaper is bad because if it's happened to one of them it's gonna happen to another one now nothing's not what this has taught me with these last two updates with reason is that nothing's permanent you know you can go on that uphill slope for so long but eventually there's gonna come a point where you're gonna have to go down but that doesn't mean you're not gonna come back up it just means that they hit a point this envelope right here is the perfect example of reason version 1, reason version 10, down to reason 12. Not necessarily a bad thing. However, I think um, as far as me and a lot of other producers really being able to, to really only use reason as a DAW, I think that that, that ship is kind of sailing. Uh, a lot of us are finding out it's just so much more CPU efficient to to run our VSTs in Ableton or Logic or something like that. It's just reason just it's cannot keep up. We, we can't it just can't keep up with uh, like any of the UHE like Diva or Repro or anything like that. Uh, even like some Tone 2, some older Tone 2 since like Gladiator I've noticed it's had issues. Uh, even the VST3 support I've known a lot of people to complain about that. So again that doesn't mean that this is the necessarily a bad thing for propeller head it just means that yeah it's maybe a good time to start learning don't put all your eggs into one basket as far as your tools are concerned so now that all that's out of the way i want to get into the history of reason why i love reason so much and i want to really focus on the good things about reason and the good things that are still here about reason and you know maybe try to come up with some ideas about how it can improve in the future so now that that's said and done why did I first start using reason 
I started producing music back in 2001, I believe, is when I really started actually. I always used drum machines before then. I had like a, a Boss DR-220 uh, and uh, like a Roland JP-8000. I used to just play guitar over that, never recorded anything, but I would always have like some little one-man band playing. And I started using Fruity Loops version 2. And anyone who started producing music back when there was Cubase VST or Cubasis rather, or Fruity Loops, or any of these old ass uh, DAWs like Sonar, you, you can vouch for the fact that it was an absolute fucking disaster trying to keep track of all your VSTs, trying to keep track of all your samples, trying to keep track of version upgrades. You would up, update a version of your software like Cubase. None of their old stock plugins would be in the new version, so all your old files wouldn't work. You had to remap all your old stuff. It was an absolute disaster. And then, you know, Reason comes along, Propeller Head, and they have this, this, this amazing vision, this amazing vision that, you know, we're not going to – we just want – the producer just to focus on writing music and not have to focus on so much technical bullshit when they're doing it. So they, we want to make a program where everything's in one little central location. You don't have to have all these separate VSTs you have to keep um, keep track of. If you import samples, you can, you can embed the samples directly into your file. And most importantly, they wanted to make sure that when you updated to different versions, they never took any instruments out. And to me, that was huge. That's why I started using Reason. Because, I mean, I'm constantly going through old files that I make and constantly doing that. And it's really difficult to do that with, like, uh, older versions of Cubase that I have. I haven't used Cubase in a, in a while or even Ableton. Just by the way they, you know, just by the way they organize their, their folders and things, it, it can just be really, really, it can be really difficult trying to keep track of projects over the years when you have so many different auxiliary files with it. So that was the first vision with Reason and the, one of the first things about the program that I really it really enjoyed. So I started using Reason at 2.5 and um, when 2.5 was out the Combinator was already there and this I believe that this was the first update that came with version 2 it's completely different now. I don't even know what the fuck I'm looking at. But um, basically, the Combinator was just like the most amazing thing back then because you could make these really, really cool evolving sounds. It was like being able to kind of build your own synthesizer. And um, Reason also back in the day had its fair share of problems. You know, the most imp the main problem being is dealing with audio, not being able to record, not even being able to sample. The NNXT and NN19 samplers back in all the way up until Record, which I think was version 6, uh, technically with Reason, even being up to that point, you couldn't, it was so difficult dealing, just doing something as simple as putting a vocal line in one of your songs. What you would have to do is go into the stupid ass NNXT, let me create an NNXT right here, you would have to go into the NNXT, you would have to create a channel inside uh, your NNXT, manually load the sample, and you would have to just, in the sequencer, you would have to have this long ass like C note that just played the sample from start to finish. You couldn't play the sample from like the beginning of the fucking song or in the middle of the song. If you wanted to listen to like a verse, you'd have to play the whole fucking verse from the beginning of that, that stupid ass note in the sequencer all the way to the end. So that's how I wrote my tracks for ages. Most people rewired Reason, and back in the day, it worked very well with Ableton. Uh, it rewired very well with Ableton. It was always well known to work flawlessly with that. I always just used Reason. I didn't do a lot of vocals anyway, so I just was like, well, screw it. I'll just put something in the NXT. So those were some definite limitations with the earlier versions of Reason. Uh, 3 came out, and 3 might have actually had the Combinator. I, I don't really know if it was 2 or 3. Um, I know it was there since pretty much since the beginning when I started using it. Um, the devices inside Reason, I've always loved the devices inside of Reason. Like just the stock, the, the stock plugins that come with it. I've always loved the Maelstrom, uh, the um, Subtractor. You know, the samplers are even really cool, even though you couldn't literally sample with them back in the day. I've just always 
love those. Even the redrum was was really cool. Um, so obviously Thor came out with version four. That was a big improvement on four. And back in those days, a new version of Reason didn't mean oh the new functions. Back in like version four and five, that meant oh I get to use new instruments inside Reason. That means I get to use. I don't have to stick to the same stuff. So it was a big deal having like Thor out back in like version four. It was huge having like this, this like at the time it was kind of a beast of a synth. Um, by itself, it doesn't sound that great. You have to layer like four or five of them to really get some good fat, fat sounds. You know, something you could normally do with like, you know, repro now you could, you could do with like, you know, five or six Thors back in the day to get that really fat you know, seven voice sounding poly synth, but it was still incredible back then using Reason. And you still, that, that we still had the sampling limitations back at version four. You still had, uh, you couldn't record anything. It was, a, it was a fucking mess. You, you could, the, even the thought of being able to use a VST with Reason, like there was, back in those days that they were just saying, no, you're never going to be, we're never going to do that. I, mean, I, I do even remember reading articles where they were just literally saying, no, you're, we're not going to have VST. Because again, that messes with the original, the, the vision that was originally with Reason. And the vision behind Reason was to have everything in one spot and have Reason be its own, its own unique music making machine which I really like. I really like that about it because in a lot of ways, working with limitations is a good thing as an artist and a producer. In a lot of ways, these days, we have too many options. There's, you can literally do anything. You, you can do anything you want. I, I make things in Reactor now, and even with the, the, the latest developments in Reactor, uh, being able to program your own... Um, your own oscillators and being able to just literally design your own things in core you can literally do anything you want musically and that's a good thing but i think there's a lot to be said for limitations it really forces you to be creative and the earlier versions of reason they really forced you to be creative you know and jumping on to reason five i don't really remember there being too many crazy improvements in five i think there were just some new synths added, and there were some functional things added. I want to say version 5 was the version where they, they made some improvements to the, uh, they added the QWERTY thing where you could, because my biggest complaint of reason from 2 to like 5 was no right-click menus to be able to select my, my tools, and that was a big complaint with me. But I think in 5 they made, they put the QWERTY thing in there. So you could select, you know, your selector, your draw, your erase, and everything with the QWERTY keys, and that was that was a really cool improvement. Um, honestly, after that, I didn't really. I know Record came out, and during those days, I was, I can, I don't, I think I was using Cubase, like Cubase Five, for the most part. I had just gotten Complete Eleven with uh, Native Instruments. And I just, I loved Complete so much that I just, I mean, I couldn't use it with Reason. I kind of stopped using Reason for a while and just started using Cubase uh, with with Complete 11. So I don't, I'm, I think I skipped the whole record, the whole record thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure that version update 7 or 8 with Reason was when they incorporated record into Reason. And that was huge for me. That was huge. Uh, at that point, I really didn't use any other DAWs other than to just maybe record some synth lines through some of my my VSTs and things like that but back when you could when you could do that when you can actually start recording oh that's another thing I think during version 5 you could actually go in the NNXT and actually record a sample in the NNXT so it was literally a sampler at that point in the N19 so I do remember that about version 5 um but back into record, when you could actually start recording inside Reason, that was a huge, huge improvement. And keep in mind, up until this point, all the updates that have been coming out with Reason are things that were just, at the time, for Reason users, were just, like, mind-blowing. Like, we were just so happy and to just get these improvements. And, like, everyone just loved all the new stuff that was coming out. Because, again, it goes into the theory of having limitations. When you don't have a lot to work with in the in the first place, 
and it, it forces you to be creative. And at the same time, when you do get something new, it's a really big deal. And it felt really good to have even something as simple as just like the new Thor synth or a new effect or something like that. So that was really neat. And so when you could record with Reason and not only be able to record, but actually drag and drop a sample into the sequencer, to me was just amazing. And at that point, I really felt like Reason was at really its own, like a, a real DAW. Like I could really, really make full, full songs and I could really, really do some professional quality things with Reason. Those, are, those would be the updates from like seven to eight. And if I'm not mistaken, I think there were some, I, I'm pretty sure the updates, uh, oh, the next, the how could I forget the next, the huge update, what I think that was with nine was the rack extensions. And I loved rack extensions. I loved that concept. I love the concept because, again, it goes with the it goes with the fundamental vision of Propeller Head Software, which is we want to keep we don't want to we don't want to disorganize or confuse the producer. We want the producer to have everything everything inside the rack to just function properly. We don't want a whole bunch of different interfaces, and we don't we when we someone hits undo. If they're using a VST, uh, if anyone's familiar with back in, you know, back in the day when you, like, if you were using, like, uh, an older version of Cubase or, or Ableton or something like that, if you had your VST open and you did a control Z, then you wouldn't, you would undo what you did in the DAW. You wouldn't undo all the work you just did in your VST. So that was actually one of the things that Reason incorporated in the rack extensions that was, that was really big at the time is being able to do that. So that was really cool for me, and I thought it was great for other developers too to be able to have rack extensions in there. And I, I just I love the rack extensions. They they a lot of them were just so cool. I think um, I've got quite a few of them in here. If you can see, I've got uh, let's see reason that's all propeller head stuff. But yeah, I've got like a um, uh, I've got a Roland TV three hundred three emulator, a uh, Juno emulation. Uh, I got some really cool stuff from Vlamsoft, an 808 emulation. It's not the best em 808 emulation, FYI. Uh, just really cool stuff. And like, this is one of the, my favorites, the Korg Poly 6. Those were so cool. That was one of the first things that came out as a rack extension were those um, Korg Monopoly and Korg Poly 6. And they were just, they just, they're really, really fun to use. They're, they're, they're really basic sounding. They don't sound the best. They don't, they sound nothing like a real, if you've ever messed with a real Korg. Uh, poly six it doesn't sound anything as good as that but it's it sounded really cool and like anything in reason you can just layer and layer and layer if you want to get a better sound uh within a combinator so rack extensions to me that was another update that was just like oh man this is just huge this is huge being able to do this so and now we move on to 10 and 10 was to me the final the final you can call this the final the final masterpiece in Reason Software, or you can call it the final nail in the coffin in Reason Software. It's whatever you think it is. To me, when you could actually, when you could actually incorporate VSTs into Reason, at this point, I knew I was like, I don't need to use anything else ever again to make music. At the time, that's what I thought. Um, and you know, at the time, I had a really expensive uh, MacBook Pro, so it really didn't have any problems. Uh, using using a lot of VSTs. I mean, it was a lot. It ate up a lot more CPU than a lot of other uh, DAWs did. Like a lot of like even like like FL Studio and I know Ableton. It's it's so clean when it runs VSTs. There's just there's barely any added CPU to to Ableton when you're doing that. So it's and reason it's always been it's always been an added added CPU hog the the VSTs and that's something they haven't really fixed they haven't really fixed that uh, from version 10 to version 12 and that to me this is when reason really started to go downhill from version 10 was great I love version 10 I wrote I've probably written maybe I don't know, gosh maybe six or seven albums in reason 10 uh, which is which was great and being able to use VSTs was great too because my own personal style and I've gotten so used to using reason and all the rack extensions over the years I didn't really feel a need to use only VS, VSTs other artists that just wanted to use VSTs they 
they ran into a lot of problems because they wanted to just stack a whole bunch of VSTs on top of each other and use nothing but that. And Reason wasn't really handling that very well. And a lot of people were complaining about that at the time. And, you know, since the technology was, was new inside Reason, uh, obviously VST technology wasn't new at the time, but it was new inside Reason. I didn't, I don't think anybody really expected it to be flawless with Reason, but at the same time, it was kind of a bummer for a lot of people. So at this point, I kind of felt with Reason, I'm like, okay, Reason 10, you can literally do anything you can do with with any other DAW for the most part. For the most part, you can do anything. You can record, uh, it has VST support, you can have your own instruments, you can you, you can pretty much do anything you want to do with it. So I really felt at 10, they should have just kept, they should have just kept it at, I mean, the way it was, they should have just, they should have held off. Honestly, we should maybe be seeing like a reason 10.5 now other than a version 12. I think they should have really, really focused on trying to trying to make the, the VSTs more fluid inside Reason and less CPU intensive. That's my own personal opinion. I've, again, I don't know how, I mean, I'm sure that's a, that's a ton of work on their part. I realize that. But at the same time, if the company wants to, wants Reason, really wants Reason to be its own, its own studio, its own DAW, then that's, that's, they have to take the time and they have to make those VSTs just, just run flawlessly inside reason. Um, so I don't really feel like there's been that much of an attention. I have, I personally haven't noticed it, uh, too much of an improvement on that. I've, I've noticed a little bit of an improvement over the last two versions, 11 and 12, but you know, this kind of gets into the territory of I think where reason is kind of starting to go downhill mainly because I th it just seems to me like now with version 11, I did not like version 11. I didn't think version 11 had, it was the first time in the history of me using the software from version two to version 11, where I felt like there was absolutely nothing in that update that justified me even spending an extra, an extra like $50 to upgrade, upgrade the software. All of those improvements that came out with 11, I felt were completely unnecessary for me. And here's why I feel like they're completely unnecessary. Up until from reason one, up until reason 11, you can really see with the, with the updates that I've kind of lined out here, you can really look at that and you can go back to this envelope right here. This is, this is the history of reason, this, this envelope. You can really see how the push was is to is to build reason up just build it up make it more powerful you know more features more powerful and get it to this point where you can do anything you want to do inside reason and then to me it feels like okay now that we're getting now that reason is uh it itself is just going to be a vst well we're kind of going back to where reason was when it first came out when it was really useful as uh a VST that was rewired into Ableton. And I thought the whole point of us up until Reason 10 was to get away from where Reason had to be dependent on other DAWs. I thought that was the whole point of all these updates, all these rack extensions and the VST support and the recording support and all these other things. So why, as I'm like, well, why are we going back? I can understand that if that's something people want, if that's something people want, yeah, that's that's fine. And it's not like it's it's not like it's a, a bad feature or anything. But I just I, but I really noticed that at this point, this is when reason this is when I noticed the initial vision of reason, that initial vision really, really declined. And it really that it really hit me like a ton of bricks. That same vision that I've been my whole you know production career, I've just lived this whole thing just to see reason grow and grow and grow and it gets to this point and you can't end at this point now I see it going back down to where it was back in the early 2000s where you're gonna have to have a copy of Ableton if you want it to if you want to use reason really well and um, I just in especially with this version 12 update I don't really see anything really um, happening I really don't see reason building up anymore if that makes any sense i don't see this going into like another freaking cycle of a saw wave you know pun intended so and so back to reason 12 i was you know i was kind of excited you know i've i've 
I don't have a 4K screen. I mean, I have a high high resolution. I'm running uh, 1080, but I mean, to me, this this is unacceptable as a version update. I, I don't know how clearly you're going to be able to see it on this video, but you know, everything else, Europa over here looks nice and crisp and pretty, but this rack extension, and this is a propeller head product, this Parsec, great product, by the way. This this is a rack extension. Like, there's no reason why this shouldn't, they shouldn't have updated their interface to have high-resolution graphics. And this makes Reason almost unusable for me because Luna here by um, Pink Noise Studios, I write a lot of vintage horror music and a lot of vintage uh, 80s, like, synthwave and shit like that. So I'm always using Luna, and it's so good on the CPU. I can just run fucking 100 of these things in a track, but I can't even look at the fucking thing now. Like, I can't look at it. It's it's ridiculous. I, I, I literally can't fucking look at it. I can't read the text. It's all It looks like a fucking 8-bit, which is fine. You know, I've got plenty of other plugins for 8-bit fucking emulations, but it's not an 8-bit emulation, and even if it was an 8-bit emulation, I wouldn't want it to fucking look like one. So anyways, I'm just ranting at this point, but that's, this is one of the things I noticed about the, um, I really noticed with, with this 12 update, and this is just an outsider looking again, again, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to anybody at Reason Studios or anything. Like, I, I love that company. I know how hard the staff works there, but this, this is obvious to me that this is a, this is a product release and a company that is just hurrying and trying so hard to put something out just to put something out, just to have some money coming in, just to, just to try to remain relevant. Because I think, I, th I think after that 11 update that everyone complained about, the last thing they should have done is put out a half-assed update. And this is, this is a half-assed update and it doesn't offer anything. And like, I don't mind the update in itself, but it should have been, it, it, to me, this isn't the type of thing you pay, a, pay $120 for, for, a, for a version up, update just to have some some better graphics that aren't even better graphics for your rack extensions or even the even the sequencer the tools aren't even high. I mean come on the 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 transport panel's not high res the, the sequencer tools aren't high res I mean it's petty I realize that it's it's kind of petty but at the same time it's like I mean come on now I mean it's I mean just do something or don't do don't do it at all um so, and that just kind of brings me back to the question of just, I'm going to end the video here just saying, just asking everybody watching, you know, what does this say about the industry? What is this, what does this say? Because like I said before, if it's not reason, if it's reason this time, it's going to be able to next time. And if it's not able to next time, it's going to be native instruments next time. And I'm a, I, I have my own company and I release uh, reactor builds. So I'm terrified of reactor being fucking uh, fucked up. I'm terrified of something happening to reactor and uh, some kind of future, either not even with native instruments, some kind of like uh, some kind of update within the 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 uh, computer industry, some kind of some kind of update process or update or something in the next coming years that makes it impossible to use reactor or something and them not just just not having the time and i think that that's what we're seeing here with this version of reason we're seeing we're seeing a company trying to keep up with not the not the music production industry we're seeing a company try to just keep up with the technology industry just high high res graphics and like uh, one of the developers said you know the uh, I think everybody got an email, you know, they were saying the code, the, the oldest code inside Reason is the code for the graphics. So in order for them to, to update this, they have to update their whole code. And it's, 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 it's very difficult for them to do that. And that's why, you know, I don't blame Reason for that. I don't blame Reason Studios or anything. It, 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 just, it just kills me. And it makes me wonder, and that's what I want everybody who's watching this that's been producing music that really cares about it and is really passionate about it to really to really ask yourself that, like, I, I, to me as a producer right now, I'm going to keep making music. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, but my mistake here, I should, I should have not have put all my eggs in one basket with just reason. And I should not have just put all my eggs in this basket and said, I've, it's very difficult. I'm so good at using writing music and reason. And I know this program so well. 
and I am so quick and so fast at writing music in this, it is going to take me years before I'm able to even get halfway to the point I'm at inside Ableton, which is the next, which is obviously the the next program I'm going to use is Ableton because it's 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 pretty decent and I've I've used it before, but the flow that I've developed over these years inside Reason uh, is is just not it's never going to be there 100 percent with other DAWs. So my mistake, I really should have, I really should have always been practicing Ableton and continued learning that even though I'm learning reason. And then even, even um, that even brings up another point. Let's say the industry in general, you know, who, you know, we're all musicians. We don't, it doesn't hurt to play a musical instrument from time to time. I mean, it's going to sound ridiculous, but what if a fucking what if a fucking asteroid comes down and just takes out all the, the goddamn fucking um, satellites in the sky? I mean, you're going to have to play something. Um, I mean, that's a little hyperbolic, but at the same time, I mean, there's nothing, there's no guarantee that any of this is going to be here for a while. And there's no guarantee any of, it, any of it's going to be functional for a while. And one of the things I'm just noticing and the scene in general, just as producers, like I said before, there's there's so many fucking there are so many fucking developers making stuff and there are so many people doing stuff. That is always an indication that something is becoming there's 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 too much of it. It's becoming too commercialized. All the all music production is becoming way too commercialized. There's way too much stuff to choose from. There's just way too much stuff out there. And eventually people are going to start getting bored. And who knows, people might just go back to just just doing analog gear. So my advice with this is just really everyone. And I know a lot of people that are in my shoes. They're going to be, <clears throat> you know, if you've been using reason since like version two or even like version four, like me, you're just simply not going to like 12 or 11. I and mean, that's just the way it is. Like, I mean, most of us, I highly doubt anyone that's been using reason for the last 10 or 15 years is going to look at this version update and be like, okay, this is it. I'm, I'm sold. I, people that have been using, no offense to anyone who's only been using Reason for a couple of years, but I mean, you're you're going to be less likely to really understand how catastrophic this really is. This is a major disappointment, and I just want everybody to just really self-reflect on this and just kind of like, and just think about, you know, just just learn from it. And maybe try other tools and don't give up on reason because it could make a comeback like anything. I could, this just may be a downtime, uh, but I was, I don't really see, I, I don't see, and then in, even in the near future, I don't, I don't see a lot of these problems being fixed with reason. So I'll leave it at that. And uh, I'll always love this program more than anything. I've had some of the best moments in my life. Uh, write music with friends and reason and learn in reason when it comes down to like a new producer I always tell new producers always use reason if you're just learning to produce music for one reason and one reason only reason will teach you signal flow better than any other DAW out there you can manually put in your wires this and that is a fundamental concept in electronic music is the signal flow and routing of your instruments and your effects so Reason's great. It'll always be great. Um, if you made it this far, uh, a little bit of self-promotion. If you have a copy of Reactor, you can go to my website, gormo.com. Uh, I sell horror-themed Reactor builds. Uh, these are all, these two right here are going to be like uh, your 80s horror. These are going to be a lot of old analog, like um, 80s horror sounds. Wave Lady is a synth wave synth. Uh, Blood Drums, Ghost Box is an additive synth, and you're going to get a lot of really cool, like, scary sounds. All my stuff is pretty much horror-themed uh, reactor builds. So if you're using Reactor 6, pick up a copy. You can get all of them for 40 bucks, or you can buy them individually. Um, anyway, anyways, happy uh, music production, guys.